In this video, we will look at how to use Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff voltage law, and Ohm's law to solve electric circuits. The main steps involved in using KCL, KVL, and Ohm's law to solve circuits are shown here. Recall that a node is where two or more circuit elements meet. A loop is a path which starts and ends at the same node. And a branch is a path which connects two nodes. So let's get started. The first step is to label branch currents. In this given circuit, the 9 volt DC source and this resistor are in series. Therefore, we can label this current and call it I1. We can label the current in this branch I2. And finally, the two 500 ohm resistors are again in series, so they carry the same current and we can label the current in this branch as I3. The next step is to mark voltage polarities across resistors as using the assumed currents. So we can see here that current I1 is entering the resistor at this end and leaving the resistor at this end. So the end where the current enters is higher potential and is marked positive and the end where the current leaves is lower potential and marked negative. Similarly, for this, for this resistor through which I2 flows, we can mark the voltage polarity as follows. For these two resistors, for current I3, we can mark the polarity as follows. The next step is to identify loops and apply KVL to each loop and also identify nodes and apply KCL to each node. In this setup, we have three unknowns, I1, I2 and I3. Therefore, we need to have three equations in order to be able to solve for I1, I2 and I3. Let's identify this loop and label it A and then let's identify this loop and label it B. So this loop A starts here and comes back to the same point. Loop B starts here and comes back to the same point. Also we identify this node and label it as X. Now we are ready to apply KVL to each loop and KCL to each node. Recall that Kirchhoff voltage law states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero. And in writing the KVL expression, we use a positive sign for the voltage drop following passive sign convention. So let's look at loop A. We can start anywhere in this loop. Let's start at the 9 volt independent voltage source. So following this direction of I1, we see that I1 is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus. Going from minus to plus is a voltage rise and under passive sign convention, voltage rise is written with a minus sign. So what we get is minus 9. Next is the voltage drop across the resistor. We can see that I1 is entering the terminal marked plus, leaving the terminal marked minus. So this is a voltage drop and this is written with a positive sign. So applying Ohm's law, this gives 1000 I1. And the next term is this resistor, which is another voltage drop. So 1000 I2 is equal to zero. Next, we apply KVL to loop B. We can start here. We can see that we are going from plus to minus. So this is a voltage drop and this is written with a positive sign. So this is 500 I3. Next, we are going again from plus to minus. So this is a voltage drop. So this is given by 500 I3. And lastly, for this resistor, 
we can see that we are going from minus to plus. So this is a voltage rise and this is written with a minus sign. So this is minus 1000 I2 is equal to zero. Next, we apply KCL to node X. Recall that some, the Kirchhoff current law states that the sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving a node. So let's apply KCL to node X. We can see that there is one current that is entering, which is I1. And there are two currents that are leaving, which are I2 and I3. So sum of currents entering is equal to the sum of the two currents leaving. Thus, we can see that we have three equations and three unknowns, and these can be solved to obtain values of I1, I2, and I3. Using a scientific calculator, we can show that these three equations can be solved to give the following values of I1, I2, and I3. Thus, the obtained values are I1 is 3 over 500 amps, which is equal to 6 milliamps, and I2 and I3 are both equal to 3 over 1000 amps, which is 3 milliamps. Now we can obtain the power associated with the independent voltage source. So the power associated with the voltage source is the product of the voltage times current. And we need to use passive sign convention to decide the sign of the power calculation. So we can see that this current I1 is entering the terminal marked minus. Hence, we write the power with a negative sign. So this is minus 9 times I1. And then substituting the value of I1 as 6 milliamp, we obtain minus 54 milliwatt. So this shows that the independent voltage source is generating power in this circuit. We can verify the solution using LTSpice. This is the same circuit constructed in LTSpice. And we can run this simulation and then if I hover the cursor above the independent voltage source symbol, we can see in the bottom left corner that the power dissipation is minus 54 milliwatt as we calculated. So this confirms the solution.